And we're glad to see you. You know, David said, and I often quote this verse in Psalms 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I hope you are able to say that same thing. Listen, there's no place. You know, at the end of the day, everybody's going to get excited about a game called Super, Super Bowl. Well, you know, the Redskins, the only thing we get is a supersized fry. You know, <laughs> we can't even get a Super Bowl or maybe a Super Bowl side of cereal or something. But anyway, <clears throat> I want to uh, say thank you for coming out today uh, again. Uh, when I was in South Dakota, I preached uh, from Deuteronomy chapter number 2 and verses 1 through 7. So I'd like for you to turn there this morning, and I want to read verses 1 through 7. <clears throat> then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me, and we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you north, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass uh, through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Uh, take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot's bread, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau. And you know, before I finish the last verse, when God gives you something, he never takes it back. Aren't you glad about that? Amen. It didn't say, you know, well, you know, we sometimes take the keys to the car, well, you know, you're grounded or whatever. I'm going to go there. Uh, verse number seven, but the Lord never takes it back. And this was the verse that we used there. Uh, but uh, it says, for the Lord thy God have blessed thee in all thy works of thy hand. He knoweth thou walking through this great wilderness these forty years. The Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, they were celebrating their 40th anniversary. Here in a few days, we will celebrate our sixth anniversary. Now, it's not quite 40, but I guarantee you, it certainly seems like we've been in the wilderness a time or two, uh, and that's okay. But the thing is, is that God has been with us every step of the way. Uh, and so this morning, uh, you know, even when it seemed we were down to our last bit of meal and our last little bit of oil, the Lord has blessed us. It's okay to say amen. amen. But this morning, I want to talk about, and we get our scripture, our, our title to our message from verse number three. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you north. The message title you have suckered. <laughs> there is some candy. You have circled. You should have heard what I said up there. It wasn't on this message, but anyway, I won't go into that. You have circled this mountain long enough. You see, God wants to move you on. Amen. Uh, turn ye north. Lord, help me today. Help me to say what you would have me to say. This is kind of cumbersome. And so, Lord, I just ask your mercies as we stand here this morning. Thank you now for what you'll do, and we'll give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, again, the Bible lays out the path they had been taking for 40 years. But I'm glad that the God we serve is aware of everything. He's aware everywhere we go, and he's aware of everything you do. Amen. Amen. Even when things aren't going so well for us, even when the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. You know, while we were doing our thing, God was merciful. He's watching over us. He's pleading your case. He's not treating us like a bug zapper. You know, a bug flies into a zapper and it's over. You know, and, you know, Job chapter 31, verse 4, you might want to write these references down. It says, Doth not he see my ways 
and count all, not some, but all my steps. I mean, can you imagine how many steps? And I can remember specifically, eight months and two weeks, Tate stood up to walk. He never has sat down. <laughs> and think of all the steps you have taken in your life, and God knows each and every one. Don't tell me he don't care about you. And, and then what it says in Psalms chapter 56, and verse 8, Thou tellest my wonderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Every tear, every time you've blown your nose or whatever, <clears throat> I don't know why we say that, I hope you didn't blow it off. But every time you expel the mucus from your nose and all that stuff, God has a count of everything you have done. Amen. Amen. So, while we are going through the wilderness, listen, there are going to be some tears. Amen? I'm telling you right now, there are going to be some tears, and the Lord keeps track of them all. Now, we aren't told this, but I believe each trip that they took in the wilderness for 40 years was different. You say, well, how do you know that, Pastor? I know this. There's never been two snowflakes to hit the ground since snow has come about that are the same. They're never the same. Can you imagine? Now, when we were kids, we used to cut snowflakes out, and after a while, everybody's snowflakes would look similar. You know, we might come up with four or five different things. But can you imagine? That's the kind of God we serve. So you know, as they went through that wilderness, there was something different each time. And I guarantee you, it was to draw them closer to God. Are you with me this morning? Amen. You know, uh, again, like I said, no snowflakes that have been the same. Now, so meanwhile, back at the ranch, God was aware of, their, of this great nation. Now, listen, this wasn't a room like this. You're talking over a million people walking through the wilderness. Now, can you imagine having to go? I mean, some of us can't even walk through Blair. I might be one of them now. And the thing is, we might think we're in the wilderness or such and such. Everybody would have a different opinion and all these attitudes and all of these thought processes, but God had a record and God was aware of everything. God is aware of every need this morning. He's aware of everything that you have asked for, everything you don't need as well, but he's aware of those things. Amen. That's good preaching, Pastor Holder. You know, when I was in South Dakota, I used a lot of his statements, you know, even putting the cookies on the bottom shelf and somebody said, did we have cookies tonight? <laughs> so, again, uh, maybe you're here and you've been walking through your wilderness, your sometimes self-made wilderness, because really the story goes this way, is that, you know, we walk through our wildernesses because we will not obey and follow what God has told us to do. The same thing happened to Israel. Again, you know, and I'll mention that. I'm hoping that Pastor Old BB will let me preach tonight. But you see, we walk through our own wildernesses. It may not seem like uh, like it, but remember, as we read in the middle of verse seven, there it said, "He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness." You know, David said. In Psalm 13, how long will you forget me, God, forever? It might seem like when things are going bad, we think God has forgotten us. But aren't you glad that he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us? Amen. Amen. Now, we'll leave certain things and we'll forsake certain things, but God is not that way. He's not slack concerning his promises as men are. Amen. Amen. And again... He's making a way possible for you. You know, many times when it seems like, now, now, now talk to me this morning. Has it ever seemed like God has forgotten about you? Yeah. And has it ever seemed like God is not doing anything? Yeah. Amen. But you know what? God is always doing something. Amen. And though you might not see it, but boy, oh boy, he, he makes the impossible possible. Yeah. And you know, it says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, the latter part of that with men, 
things, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now, I know he was teaching his disciples about the camel going through the eye of a needle and all those things. Now, you have to remember, they, we're not talking a saw a needle, but there were areas and passages where they could not go. But God is saying, hey, this ain't too hard for me. You know, you look at your hand. That's not too hard for God. All God does is not too hard for him. Amen. So, so now we see that uh, Israel was ready to enter into the promised land after all these years. But some things had to happen uh, before they uh, would be heading that direction. So, so what do we learn? God does not want you to stay in the same place. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. You see, uh, you remember, uh, what is it, uh, by, you know, by, this, by the brook of, uh, of Sheree. You know, he was getting air mail. You know, meals dropped in. Everybody else was going through a, 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 a famine and a drought. But he was by the brook. And he had some water. And, and here comes the crows, you know. They wouldn't even eat all the meat. You know, I would think, oh, crow be going, like, look, Isaiah, you ain't going to need all that. I'm, I, I mean, not Isaiah, Elijah. I'm going I'm to nibble off of this right here. But, you know, there's the power of God. God knows how to close the mouth of the lion, and the lion's dead. Surely he knows how to do what you need to do. I, I'm going to try to get off of this thing, because I think I'm going to flip it over, and I know if Michael is going to get laugh, because he's always attempting to trip me in we have good fun with that. But God doesn't want you to stay in the same place. He doesn't want you to stay in the same condition. That's why we, he wants us to continue moving forward. To put on the whole armor of God. But nothing on the backside. But to keep fighting for him. Amen. I might just make me preach. <laughs> I'm just saying these ain't notes. But you know, as we go through here, uh, again, uh, we see... Uh, he did not want them to keep circling that mountain. And God said to him, you know what? <clears throat> uh, he, you know, he said to him, it's time. But let me say this to you. Though you may be going through some tough times, listen, God never wastes pain. He never wastes suffering. He's not wasteful. You ever been pouring water or milk or something you pour too much? Or coffee? Pour too much. You can never pour too much coffee. Yeah, you got to have coffee. But I'm just sitting here saying to you, God doesn't waste what's going through in your life right now. It's to do something in your life. Amen? Amen. And so we see here, as we look at the Bible, part of the land they were going through, uh, going around, belonged to Esau or the Edomites, the descendants of him. And, you know, Esau had, was the brother of Jacob. Well, you know, they didn't get along too well. And uh, you know the story, Jacob tricked him and all that stuff. But it really was Esau's own fault. He didn't really want the birthright anyway. If it meant something to him, he would have said, no, I'll I, I wait. You know, but I, I, that's another day's message. But, you know, sometimes we'll give up walking with God because something over here might look better. It's only temporary, but it looks better. So, remember, here's my point. Edom watched Israel walk through this battle. Or this area. Can't you just see them going? Echo. There they go again. <laughs> what in the world has gotten into those Israelites? Didn't we see them last week? Or oh, it probably took more than a week, I'm sure. Didn't we see them this time last year? They're going around that mountain again. Well, what is my point? You see, uh, again, Israel uh, would have wanted and have been jealous of the land that they have. Listen, when you're going through some tough times, it's easy to be uh, uh, jealous of the guy across the street who never darkens a church door, but it seems like everything is going well. I don't ever see them in no trouble, but here we are going through. Talk to me this morning. And again, let me tell you something. Edom didn't just see him going around the mountain. Edom saw how God provided for them as they went around the mountain. Amen. Remember, they had shoes that didn't wear out. And they had a, a, a well-balanced diet. And there was no refrigeration out there. But all they had to do was scoop a little bit. Somebody said, well, this was 
including here, sorry for you bald people. A little dab will do you. You know, God has said, a little of this will keep you until the next morning. Amen. You know, and so they saw that. Listen, when you're going through troubled times, people around you are watching. And they see how you go through it. And if you're always a murmuring and complaining, they see that as well. Do you Amen. hear me this morning? So when you're struggling, I'm not sitting here telling you, am I too loud? No. no. I'm not sitting here telling you, oh, this doesn't hurt. Oh, I'm just having the time of my life. You are lying, and you know it. You know, it hurts. Uh, it, it is supposed to do that. But, you know, people see how you go through your trials. Amen. And God wants you to be a blessing. Your others are watching you. And, and as you go through your circumstances, you know, again, Eden would have been a place that, again, that uh, Israel would have loved to have. You know, like I said, you know, they were in the side of a mountain. And, you know, uh, can't you just see them, some of the little ones? Why can't we be like them? You know, they weren't even the Joneses. They were the Edomites. So why can't we be like the Edomites? Why we got to keep walking? You ever said that? Why, why, why? I used to say to my children, when we took many trips, some of them were down here actually, we'd get down to the end of the driveway and say, you got one chance. Go ahead and say, are we there yet? You know, why do we have to go this and why? You know, why do we have to go to church? Why do we have to talk a certain way? Why do we have to dress a certain way? Why did he have to do this? I heard somebody say, Never forget that person important the said. That's right. <laughs> he got a little heavy voice too. And he was a little video guy. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. Isn't he worthy of that? Isn't he worth that? So what you had to get up this morning? Didn't you have a nice car to drive in? Even if it was a Ford. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I hope they got that on film. <laughs> Give a lot of letters to the church. What's this about you don't like Ford? <laughs> I do. They are good trucks. I didn't say car. But there again, why are we going through this? Because he is worthy. He deserves that. Because again, he's done all those things. So the Lord says to Moses in verse number two, and spake unto me, saying, in verse three, you have come past this mountain long enough. So, don't miss this, as Pastor was saying. I said that up there too. You know, they go, what are we missing? The cookies? No. You see, let me tell you something. The wilderness isn't just for wandering. The wilderness you may be going through right now isn't just for wandering. Again, uh, we, we find that God allows us uh, some training time in the wilderness. You see, sometimes people will only go to God when things aren't going so well. Come on, you know I'm telling you the truth. You see, when things start going well, we sometimes have a tendency to let things slip. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore, we ought to give heed uh, to, the, uh, to the things which we have heard, lest, it says, we ought to give heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. You know, you let things start going a little well, and pretty soon we'll kick back just like that old farmer. No, nope, not, nothing to pick it on the farmer. Thy soul has many goods laid up for years. You know, instead of sharing his wealth, us build bigger barns. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. That's the way we are. You know, somebody said, wine, women, and song. You know, that kind of thing. We want to just ease and cruise and do all that stuff. But listen, you have an adversary. And he's never, he's always on his job trying to throw you down. He's called the devil. You see, he's always walking around checking doors. You know, you lock your doors at night, I'm going to tell you, you better. And he just happens to find one open. And he slips right on in. And that's all he wants. You see, the thing is, is this, is that oh, the wilderness is for training. And again, uh, it, the, the wilderness is, is uh, again, to help us, uh, you know, understand some things. Because when things are going well, guess what? We start losing 
our sense of vision. We start losing our compassion. We start losing our purpose because we're focused on having a good time. Somebody said, eat rice, act nice, and let the good times roll. That's what a lot of people believe. Listen, there is nothing better than knowing your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen. Amen. You see, you ever notice when we're in the wilderness? I can go and passionately give you all kinds of stories. You know, when things aren't going well, guess what? We'll be on our face seeking God. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, I need a job. Oh, Lord, God knows that. And you should ask those things. But, you know, so many times I've seen people, I remember people telling me, Pastor, if God will bless me with this job, would you pray for me? I'll be there every Sunday. We pray for them. They got the job, and they forgot about what they said. Amen. You see Sometimes that's the only way God can get our attention. Listen, he wants to speak with you daily, not just when you need something. Amen. You know, we'll be more apt to fall on our knees then. But when things start working and we start coming to the edge of the wilderness, you know, we'll go, who is God? You know. So what we see here is that they would be heading in a different direction. Things. <clears throat> Y'all give me a little extra time this morning. Things would have to change. See, again, it's the same. And that's what I like about the Bible. Everything he tells them applies to us as well. Are you with me this morning? Uh, you know, uh, again, but Israel will become complacent because they wanted to stay in the direction they were going. But God wants us to learn from this as well. And as if the Lord gets you through your wilderness, <clears throat> some things are going to have to change. You see, maybe, uh, and I know this is probably redundant, but it may be who you hang out with. All those games. Uh, but again, he, you know, see, he told the woman at the well, listen, go and sin no more. Not that she wouldn't sin again, but don't keep doing what you're doing. You know, don't keep going, well, you know, I know God will forgive me, so I'm going to go back out here and do something else again. Listen, God is saying, leave that. Don't keep asking me to forgive you for that. I forgive you, now go and do something else. Amen. Amen. There's a reason for that. You see, God wants this to know that it applies to us. He wants us to move forward. If we're going to, things are going to have to be different. Like I said, maybe it's your so-called friends, and I said that. Because, you know, young people, I'm saying this to each and every one. The friends you know now, five years from now, you may not know them. Amen. Especially if you graduate. And I know there's people who can tell you that. So we see here that, uh, again, here's another problem, is that one of the reasons why we uh, keep circling the mountain is that we start making excuses uh, for our mistakes. Well, you know, it's the family I got. And you know, I, I'm this way and I have this temper because my daddy did. Don't blame it on your daddy. The Bible says that we can't blame it on our parents anymore. You see. And the Bible is saying this. When he says turn, listen. There's so much. You could just preach on that right there. Because God wants you to Turn away from this and turn to him. And listen, when you turn away from God, you're always going to turn towards something evil. Amen. Young know, people, I've seen it. You're raised in church, and you know what? And you've been brought to church, but you get to this ripe old age about 13. <laughs> and you start thinking your friends know everything. They only 13 too. They ain't lived very long. Yep. But they know. You know, again, folks, listen, and we keep circling that mountain. You know what? A lot of times, folks, you know another reason why you circle the mountain? Not because you made excuses. Sometimes you just don't want to turn. Yeah, amen. I like my sin. Yeah, I'm going back around there again. Here's the gist of this message this morning. You know what the problem is? We haven't dealt with what uh, matters to God. You see, things keep happening in your life, and I know this is in my notes here. I'm almost unbelievable now. 
Uh, no, seriously, I, you know, I respect your time. I know you got to get home. But please come back out tonight because I got the rest of this. But I'm sitting here saying to you is this. Listen, what matters to God is what we ought to be concerned about. God does not want you to keep circling around in the same problems, the same situations, the same relationships that you've been in. Amen. He said, listen, turn. But you know what? And I know this is probably going to be mentioned tonight. Uh, so, again, when we don't, we keep walking around that mountain. And you know what the problem? Israel made an 11-day trip mm -hmm. last 40 years. Mm -hmm. What is it that God wants to do in your life that he can take care of, but because of unbelief and dis, uh, uh, unbelief and disobedience, it keeps going. I can't get the victory. I just can't stop this. Listen, the whole thing is you haven't looked at this the way God looks at it. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Amen. 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 You see, you think that God had them march around the wilderness. Why do you think you keep dealing with the same problem? You know, why do you keep, you keep going around that mountain? Because you're disobedient. Let me say this to you. You'll probably hear it again tonight. It was never God's plan for them to spy out the land. He said, you go and possess the land. How many times has God told you to do something? Oh, well, you know, uh, there's a way that seems right to a man. Well, you know, we better, we better not trust God. He just brought us across the Red Sea. He just took care of but I don't know if he can do this. Listen, didn't God wake you up this morning? Oh, Amen. Man, I'm about to lose my back. Didn't God tell you? Uh, you know, God has told you some things. Trust him. Yeah. Be obedient to him. Yeah. No, you know, I don't know if I can do that. You know, it was never his plan. But God said, okay. But he knew what they were going to do. We better spot the land. <laughs> then they say, well, we can't take it. Yeah. It was never meant for them to take it. God was going to take care of it. And so God said, okay, let me say this to you. This was not the time to be 21. <laughs> because God said everybody 20 years and younger. And listen, let me say this to you. This is the only place in the Bible where God puts a limit. He said they have not, they don't know the difference between evil and good. A lot of people like to say the age of responsibility or whatever is 12. Nowhere in the Bible you can find it. But you will find this. God puts a lemon out there and says everybody under the age of 20 and younger will go in. You know why? Because that was the very people that thought, oh, you're going to lose our children. We're going to do this. No, it wasn't. God knew what he was doing. You see, did I stun you with that one? Did I stun you, Pastor? I didn't think I did. But who think, well, you know what? That doesn't mean, now listen, let me straighten this out. That don't mean you get to act foolish until you get to 20. Come on. Come on. Oh, I'm not 20 yet. You heard what the pastor said. Listen, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man, and he's a woman too, because you know, I would say like this, well, he wasn't talking to me. I was a woman. Yes, he was. Whatsoever a man saw, that shall he reap. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, be he holding the evil and the good. Amen. Y'all might make me preach this morning. You see, what has God been speaking to you about? You see, what the problem was, Israel was willing to walk around that mountain only having a form of godliness. How many people sat in church month, month a month, Sunday after Sunday, they only have a form of godliness. Maybe they get up and they put their shirt in inside out because this is the inside of the shirt. You know, the collar turned around and all those things, like somebody said this morning, we get so enamored in what such and such got on and what they don't have, and sometimes they don't have enough. But thank God for cold weather because most of the time people go dress differently. But I'm just sitting here saying to you, folk, what in the world are we doing? You know, are we only having a form of godliness? You know, you come on Sunday. You should do that. The Bible says, don't forsake the gathering of the assembly. You know, you tithe. You should do that. It is obedience to God. Uh, but it's the only you have a form of godliness. Let me say this to you because I said this to them. Forty years, I asked every one of them. I said, have you witnessed to 40 people? One a year. 
You know, we say we believe in God. Remember the devils say the same thing. You believe there is one God? You've done well. The devils also believe in tremble. Listen, is your worship only a form of godliness until you can get out? You know, I can remember when I was 22. You know, boy, that's a while ago. And you know, I had a form of godliness. And you know what? Man, I get in that old 67 Chevelle. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I enjoyed that car. And I had my eight tracks. Yeah. Amen. I told him my age. And I'd get in there and I'd be in church and I'd look the part. And as soon as I got without range, I'd pop in me some Stevie Wonder, some Earth, Wind, and Fire, some Spoke of Dallas, and all these worldly people because I only had a form of God. I'll be honest with you. Now, after service, it might be this big, but anyway. <laughs> Do you only see, Israel only had a form of godliness. And you know what, when things are only a form of godliness, guess what, you let things slip. Their, their religious festivals and all those things that they were doing, they had let them slip. You know, you know, the Bible tells us, listen, God had a purpose for them. Because just like Edom saw them, and what they were going through, but God wanted the nations around them. You see, salvation is not just for the people in here. Salvation is for those in black. Yeah. You know, he wants you to let your light so shine before men that others would see your good works, not so they could glorify you, but so they could glorify the Father which is in heaven. <laughs> Amen. You know, when you are this way and people see you go toward God, that makes a difference in their life. But I can remember when they were the town this and the town that. But now look at them. Maybe there's something to that. Amen. You hear me this morning? Am I shouting loud enough? I can't turn it up. You know, I'll try not to. That medicine I took, you know. Man, I watched some blood that time. I priest broke one of my capillaries or something. <laughs> As I said again, you know, it was for, that was what God wanted them to be alive. God wants to give you the power, not to conquer, but to use it for his glory. Amen. Bring others to Christ. Mm -hmm. Because we are in a world that is losing. But you know what? We're so busy circling the mountain because we've got problems that every one of us in here got a problem. Mm -hmm. There's not a one that doesn't have many problems. But the thing is, you know what the problem is, just like with them, is obedience to God's word and believe that he can take things and make them different. You see, if you look in the Bible, you'll see many times, especially in Mark chapter 24, verse number 9, I believe it is, where you'll see Jesus challenge this man, do you believe I can do this? And he said, Lord, I believe, but help thine my unbelief. I like that verse because he was being honest. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see I'm almost up here. You see, again, I challenge you to witness to at least six people. One of you. One of you. We say, you know, but we're so busy focusing on the things. You know, I used to do a little uh, analogy or have a white sheet of paper and have a little dot in the middle. We're so busy focusing on that dot in our lives and others' lives too and all this other stuff that God wants us and we keep circling that mountain. You know, how long are you going to continue with that, whatever it is? Maybe it's a temper. Or maybe it's a financial thing. Because, boy, you want to kill a Christian. You don't shoot him in the heart. You shoot him in the wallet, kill him dead every time. <laughs> oh, you mean God? I knew he was going to talk about giving money. Listen, it, the Bible says in Hosea, it, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. It all belongs to him. And you ain't going to take a nickel to heaven. Amen. And I got to tell the owner of Riddle's Jewelry that same thing. I said, Mr. Riddle, when you get to heaven, if you go. And he looked at me. I said, you ain't going to reach in your pocket and pull out a nickel and say this was from down there. I said, no, 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 no. Listen, you'll never outgive God. Amen. Try it. Amen. Try it. But you might like it. I know you'll like it. Like I said, the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Pastor, I'm only really good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. But well, we keep circling the mountain. You know, you're having problems in your family because you haven't given them to God. You see, once they, had, let me say this to you, because there's a problem here. That, I mean, there's an issue here that has to be learned. All those that were over 20 died. 
Listen, if you're going to have God do some things in your life, all that sin has to die. You can't just keep a little piece over here in your little slush fund. And you know, when you get a little bored, you will pull out a little piece. Well, I think I'm going to go to the casino tonight. You know, because money's a little funny and nobody's laughing. You know what I mean? And so I'm sitting here telling you, listen, there is so much symbolicness. Once all those people, let me tell you this. I figured it out. There was about a million people. Do you know how many graves, how many funerals that relates to? Almost 70 per day. Can you imagine? Man, the undertaking was, he was raking. You know, I'm just being silly. But the point is, over 70 people a day had to die, and only two people made it in because Moses only got to look over and see that. Listen, you have to eradicate and kill that sin. Paul said, I have to die daily. There are so many things. Somebody get another uh, tissue or something. I'll tell you. I forgot. You know what? I got a uh, towel in there. But anyway, uh, you know, do, 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 do. Thank you. Get my admission. So I'm sitting here telling you, don't think you can just cut back a little bit. You know, you cut back a little sin, it's still sinning. You cut back a little smoking, you're still smoking. You got to get rid of it and say, Lord, help me. Because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And that means everything. Amen. All these are not simple. So, folks, again, how long are you going to circle that mountain. You know, because of disobedience mm -hmm. and unbelief. Mm -hmm. But I know God can do this. You know, we get head knowledge. I know He can do all things with well, trust Him. You know, God's not worried. <coughs> Why should we be? Can you look? I mean, God, can you meet God sitting there? Well, I don't know about that. Pastor Holden, that Pastor Shane. I, I'm worried stiff about it. He ain't worried about neither one of us. We don't need to worry. We just need to trust and obey. You see, as we close this morning, you know, <clears throat> have you submitted? Somebody said, that you all on the altar? You know, have you given? God knows you got problems. But give them to Him. Amen. Keep praying to Him. And then, you know, see, there's a, a way. You know, once the, all them people were dead, God said, okay. Once all your sin is done, God is saying, you know, the Bible says in Psalms uh, 60, uh, 66, verse 19, it says that if we regard iniquity in our heart, he will not hear us. You know, you go on to prayer, you, you're praying, you got one eye closed and the other one open and watching your favorite show. God's not going to hear you. But once you get that out of the way, you see, the Bible tells us to enter not into the path of the wicked. That means there are so many things we can do. You don't have to do that. Satan can't make you do it. He'll convince you you can't live without him. But as I've said so many times, oh, I can't live without him. Then die and you won't need him. Boy. I can't live without that. And then you get that bill. I can't pay that. But as we close this morning, yeah, it ain't too bad. It's just 10 after. <laughs> what are you struggling with? What issues in your life have you been going through and never getting a victory? Listen, if you're here today and you never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to let you know you're wandering around the mountain looking for pleasure. Somebody said looking for love in all the wrong places. You know, it ain't a lot to be said about that. You know, looking for happiness. Again, the world doesn't care about you. Amen. They want to use you kind of like I'm using this. I always say like this. They care about you like a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> they really do. Do you see me with a roll of toilet paper around my neck? Well, let me tell you something. When I need it, and you need it, thank God for it. <laughs> but that's what the world wants to do. They want to wipe their behinds with you at your expense. Yep. I'm not trying to be gross 
or disgusting, everybody here has to go, or you're full of it. I'm just saying it the way it is. And if you're full of it and you don't get it taken care of, it will kill you. So I'm not saying nothing to anybody. Oh, I don't, you know, I was, this is how stupid and young and we can be. Man, when I was a kid, I just thought she was Smith. She was the first love of my life. Thank God I grew out of that. She had one of them mustaches, too. And the thing is, I used to thought she was so pretty, she didn't have to go to the bathroom. Ha, 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 ha. Lord, help me, Jesus. But let me say this to you. If you are not saved, you are wandering around that mountain trying to find this and that, that only is temporary, but all that can be changed today.